coming out of sequencing the human genome in the early 2000s, the U.S. Department of Energy's Joint Genome Institute, or JGI, had the capacity and knowledge to sequence complicated genomes. In 2006, we sequenced, assembled, and annotated the poplar genome, Populus trichocarpa, or better known as black cottonwood. This was the first tree genome to have its genome sequenced, and it actually made the cover of science in 2006. Since then, we've leveraged that information to understand tree biology. We all know that humans have DNA and have chromosomes and genes, but it's true of all living organisms, and in particular, poplar. We now have a library or a catalog of 48,000 genes that determine plant function, growth, and development. Trees in terrestrial ecosystems hold the largest amount of sequestered carbon in the world. So it becomes important to understand how carbon is cycled within a tree and how long it's stored in its root system to be able to understand global carbon cycling. We're in the Sierra Nevada mountain range in the foothills. This is one of four common gardens that contain 1,100 poplar or black cottonwood genotypes. They've been vegetatively propagated by taking cuttings and therefore the genotype remains constant from environment to environment. This allows us to separate out the effect of genotype and environment on a particular trait. For example, here in early spring, you'll notice that some of the trees are leafing out and some are not. When midsummer, if you came here, you would see that some of the trees were experiencing drought and some were not. That same set of genotypes or trees planted in Astoria, Oregon, may never display this phenotype because the environment doesn't induce it. We're interested in associating gene function with particular traits. For example, in the root system, we know there's intimate contact between the microbiome of the root system and the host root. A microbiome is a collection of bacteria and fungi that form a community that function together to provide nutrients and water and decomposition to the soil environment. Other traits of interest include things like wood formation. By leveraging the poplar genome, and understanding how this complex order of 45,000 genes comes together in a network and regulates the deposition of polymers into the cell wall, things like cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. We can then modify the way the cell wall is formed and improve its potential as a biofuels or improve its potential as a source of carbon fiber.